And the coronavirus has also, corona crisis has also revealed something else, the informal sector. And the, there's a lot of questions about the informal sector, life versus livelihood, whether they can uh, go back to their work to, to make a living or does, uh, endanger their life by being uh, active uh, outside and trying to make a living because otherwise they not, do not have an income. The question is, why do we call them informal sector and make it as it sound like it's something derogatory, that they're doing something they shouldn't have done? The funny thing is, informal sector accommodates more than half the working population of India and many other countries like Bangladesh and other countries. More than half the working population are in informal sector. Why do we feel this is a, a kind of an, uh, uh, sector where as soon as possible we should pull these people out and push them into the formal sector. What do the formal sector offer for them? Jobs, very, very low paid jobs, insecure jobs without any contract on those kind of jobs, working, working in, as a domestics, working as the cleaners, working in the streets. That's the kind of job people get when you move from informal sector. But what, is informal sector something to be uh, disrespectful? Is it something bad? And I always say, no, this is the most uh, potential sector of the economy and potential sector of the people. This is the people sector. This is where people create their own life. They are not us expecting any support from anybody else. They take care of themselves and they are not making any noise for anybody else. They find opportunities, tiny opportunities to make a living for themselves. That's what the uh, informal sector is all about. And I said this is the wrong, this is the wrong terminology used by conventional e economists uh, to kind of uh, uh, express the fact that they are not doing the right thing. I said they are doing the right thing. Uh, we should call it uh, um, uh, emerging entrepreneurial sector. These are all entrepreneurs, they are, they are on their own. They are not uh, bothering anybody. They are uh, selling things on the street. They're making things at home and selling uh, to other people. Uh, they are on their own and nobody helps them. Uh, but they, have, they flourish uh, without anybody's support. And why isn't there support? And that's the question I'm asking. If I'm calling it emerging entrepreneurial uh, sector, this is what this is the seedbed of the entrepreneurship. So we should be applauding it. We should be feeling extremely happy to support them, rather than uh, uh, kind of saying that they are doing the wrong thing. They should, as soon as possible, pass on to the formal sector and become street cleaners. I said no. They are the most distinguished people, creating their own enterprise and using their own talent, own creative power to make a living for themselves. Why don't we go and support them? And I compare, compare this uh, uh, emerging uh, entrepreneurial class uh, or the informal sector and compare to the labor force. You see, for labor, there are so many things we have done. I'm not saying this is wrongly done, it's very well done. And I appreciate and applaud that. Uh, we have uh, given them legal rights, enormous legal uh, facilities created over time to protect the interest of the labor. We have allowed them, encouraged them, and give them a central stage in terms of labor unions so that they can have collective bargaining and all that. And as a matter of fact, we have given so much importance to the labor. We have created a ministry of labor at the federal level, at the state level, ministry of labor. Uh, they are the people who are paid by somebody uh, they are hired by somebody and we want to make sure they are getting paid well, they are, under, uh, they are not underpaid, they are not uh, terminated any time they wish, all kinds of things we come as protection. We, as soon as we look at the entrepreneurial sector, uh, the seedbed of entrepreneurship, we don't see anything, government supporting them in any way. I said, why don't we create in the new world, we can create chamber of commerce for uh, entrepreneurial, emerging entrepreneurial class, so that they have their own place, like any other chamber of commerce that we have, and give government representation, government 
uh, connection and protect them. There are lots of things they are harassed by the law, by the law enforcing agencies, by the businesses and everybody uh, because they are kind of treated as a refrefs in the society. I said, why should it be so? They should have their own chambers of commerce. They should have their own uh, uh, legal rights to organize themselves. And they will have their own ministry too, Ministry of Emerging uh, Entrepreneurial uh, Sector. Uh, if they do not uh, immediately create a ministry, new ministry for them, at least they should be accommodated in the labor ministry. It's a ministry of labor and the ministry of entrepreneurial uh, sec emerging entrepreneurial sector so that we have some place where we have uh, something that we can support them most important support they need is the finance that's what is lacking completely so we create enormous arrangement so that they can have ex easy access to financial resource so that they can move on and grow continue to grow as far as they want to go so we create uh, financial systems like a micro credit system as a social business, nobody wants to grab profit out of them. We create social business um, equity uh, investment as the venture capital uh, funds. We can so that anybody who wants to grow in, uh, in in the seedbed of entrepreneurship, they can grow as big as they want because no bank will ever finance them. They have fall victim to the loan sharks and everybody else, and uh, under all those conditionalities, they have to work. Why don't we give them space so that they are protected, they can grow also. And we just give the recognition. Yes, you are doing the wonderful thing. We are behind you. That's a very important to, to do because this is about half the population. So we see the, uh, the difficulty of this section where uh, we understand uh, the labor, the labor when the coronavirus came, uh, we made sure their uh, salaries continue. Nobody terminates it and taking advantage of it. Many other facilities we have given, which, which is good, which is important, but we are not worrying about the uh, new entrepreneurial class, emerging entrepreneurial class. How do we do that? So we have to pay attention to that. And we create a venture capital fund, not only for new entrepreneurial class, also for the young people, unemployed young people who are rushing to go to the cities. And instead of let them go to the cities and then in the Corona crisis, um, became victims of all kind of uh, uh, harassment. So we made sure that they become, instead of job seekers, they become entrepreneurs. Uh, they can become entrepreneurs provided we can provide the financing for them. That's where the social business venture capital is very important. And we have done that in Bangladesh uh, as a side program financial institution. Uh, anybody uh, who wants, uh, who has an idea to start a business, we come and invest and we become partner. It's a venture capital, so it's not a loan, it's equity participation. So you come up with the, your idea, we come up with your money, our money, we get a partnership with you. So you work uh, for the business and make it successful, and over time, you return the money that we gave you. Because we are social business, we are not interested in making profit out of you. You keep the profit, we just help you to overcome the problem and you return the money that we gave you. And that's done and then so all the business is yours. If you need a second round of money, we'll give you another chunk of money so that you can move on. This can be done for the entire informal, quote unquote, informal sector, that this fund can be. So they can stay home and build up the rural economy. Rural economy has so many opportunities. So, and, and that rural economy that I'm talking about is, should not be an appendix to the urban economy. Today, rural economy is a kind of a uh, footnote in the economy of the urban areas. The real economy is in the urban areas and the rural economy, although it's a much bigger than the, in terms of population, much bigger than the urban uh, economy, but it's a footnote. We want to separate it out. There'll be two economies. One is the urban economy and the rural economy. Rural economy will grow, rural economy will have part uh, uh, deal with the urban economy uh, in, 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 in an, as an independent uh, economy rather than uh, take uh, whatever uh, they can give it to you to the rural economy. Rural economy today is looked at as a kind of a factory for producing labor. So rural economy produce the labor and send it to uh, send them to urban economy to keep the machine running there. Uh, 
uh, and that's the only role rural economy has. And also rural economy produce the primary products so that the urban economy can process it, make money for themselves. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure our rural economy are not the supplier of labor. Rural economy is the thriving bed for entrepreneurial entities and entrepreneurial activities uh, uh, bursting out in many different directions. Today, distance and location is unimportant. That's what the coronavirus demonstrated that again. Wherever you are, you can deal with the whole world uh, because technology makes it happen. So your presence in the urban areas uh, is not important. Your idea, wherever you live is important. So if I can live in the village, I can live in my, with my family, with my children, uh, and live in my place where I was born, and I do everything with the rest of the world. So the first thing are rural institutions will be exclusive institutions. Rural economy will be an economy by itself and deal with the urban economy as a kind of parallel economy, not as an appendix, not as a footnote to the rural economy and uh, urban economy and so on. So these are the ideas that the, now the coronavirus has uh, give us. When we build the new world, we build it a new way of thinking. If you keep on the old way of thinking, we're stuck with an old engine. An old engine will take you back to where we were. And that was not a very happy situation. We don't want to go back. We want to create a totally new world, which is given the opportunity, we grab the opportunity and make it happen. That's the task that we are given by Corona crisis. And Corona crisis is not a crisis, but it's a great opportunity.